Motherfucking logo overload! Movie thinks this trip through CGI space is gonna get me excited about interstellar travel, when in fact all my future astronaut sperm just tragically died of disinterest. Is this alien seeing the president with more speech? Because this future alien technology knows it wasn't recorded, right? Sitting up in bed after a nightmare cliche. Okay, let's unpack this super expositional nightstand shot. First, he's reading about the German Air Force. Also, he has a cane, so he's clearly old and hobbled now. Third of all, we have the repeating doodles of a circle and its radius. Fancy pen, fancy watch, Dell remote control, and a phone with more buttons than the Starship Enterprise. I guess we're supposed to glean that this former president is still obsessed and being haunted by visions of a circle with a line in it. But mostly, I'm just concerned about that Dell remote. It's upside down here, so you have to work to see the logo, which you'd think would make Dell less likely to pay for this placement. And yet, here it is. Baffling, man. I didn't even know Dell made remote control devices. For 20 years, the world has seen no armed conflict. Nations have put their petty differences aside. <laughs> <laughs> These Jumbotron screens are hovering. Will Smith has better things to do in this scene. They're the one that's back in the White House. It's too bad Mae Whitman died and wasn't able to reprise her role as... Oh, still alive? Still actively working in Hollywood, too? Well, this is awkward. Liam Hensworth is in a moon vehicle, which might explain the break he and Miley took in real life. Though you could just as easily blame that pink armpit hair phase she went through around the time of this movie's events, I mean filming. I was the youngest valedictorian in the history of the Academy. Exposhausting. In case you confused it with one of Jupiter's moons. Do you realize that there are only 36 women on this moon base? Well, that number is worthless, unless or until you tell me how many men there are. But the movie doesn't care about that. It just wants to slide in an I've been away a long time and I'm horny joke. Ah! Movie expects me to believe that this one tiny ship is going to prevent this big thing from falling, and commanded by an inferior Hemsworth, no less. Engines are overheating, but the movie, despite personally giving us that information, will ignore the consequences of it. You're grounded until further notice. What he means to say is you're grounded until the aliens attack again and we need an outside-the-box thinker like yourself. Get me Director Levinson. You mean that guy who did Diner? You'd think he'd make this better? I'm all for it. He's unreachable, sir. Despite commanding alien technology over the last 20 years, cellular service is still spotty. You need to take me seriously. I've been chasing you across the planet for three weeks now. Excuse me, who, who are you again? Did this guy just start yelling at David right now, halfway to their destination, without David even knowing who he is or why he's here? I mean, f*** this movie. Holy f they dragged Nymphomaniac into this movie, didn't they? She looks more uncomfortable in this than she does in Antichrist, and that movie involved a scene in which scissors were used in a manner that violate their terms of use. Oh look, the same basic circle with a line doodle the former president has been drawing a lot. I bet that means something, despite the doodle's simplicity. His people fought a grand war with the aliens for ten years. A premise that is way better than this whole movie, but sure, let's shoot this one instead. It happened on its own two days ago. And now we get the whammy that kickstarts the movie. The ship turned its own lights on. The call is coming from inside the house! Of course you're aware that this is the only ship that landed in 96. Total bullsh**. Of course, the first movie made it look like every ship crash landed and was on fire after they destroyed the mothership, but sure. This one managed to land on its own and no one said about it. They were drilling. For what? Man, I don't know. Case closed then, I guess. These three don't know, so it must be impossible to crack. 20 years ago, when we destroyed the mothership, we detected a burst in an X-band frequency directed toward deep space. Funny how we're only just now hearing about that. Dell paid good money to have their laptop slammed shut in frustration and an upside down remote control shot on the nightstand. You're a pilot. He's a pilot. The other guy's a pilot. I'm giving out wings. Please welcome the International Legacy Squadron. Cap International Legacy Squadron. Also, this movie just got a lot more stealth than I think it intended. Captain Hiller, considering he died during a test flight, how do you feel taking off for the moon? Man, this reporter is the worst, and the screenwriters decided that Will Smith's character died during a test flight instead of from dating a stripper. China has been integral to the Earth's space defense program. Amazing how helpful China suddenly became in all the movies released in the last few years. Jasmine took the rear career path from exotic dancer to respected doctor in the last 20 years. And also, of course she's a doctor, because we're in an Emmerich movie. So they're sending an elite squad of eight pilots to the moon? And that's supposed to... what? I'm a guy, I like pretty girls, but even I'm not comfortable with how sexualized this girl's deplaning ritual is. This is the very definition of the male gaze, where a sexy pilot is suddenly overcome with the urge to excrete pheromones while standing inside a jet. Um, can't they just not be related? Why is everybody somebody something in this movie? Moon milk! You know, the last thing I said to my parents was I hated them. Ladies and gentlemen, Roland Emmerich, pandering to the cheapest of human emotions in the sleaziest of ways, once again. Please applaud. Jake decides to watch the training video where he nearly killed Dylan, possibly realizing that an unseen audience needs a backstory. Brackish wakes up from his coma after everything alien-related in this movie awoke from comas two days ago. This just came in from Hubble. Still using the Hubble after mastering all that alien technology, huh? Didn't even want to give the James Webb telescope a shout-out? Sure, it's not an operation yet, but this is a movie, damn it. Up the alert level to red. So, red alert then? I'm calling Star Trek on your ass. Listen, I want you to pack up your stuff and go to your sister's. This guy just got evidence there may be an alien attack, and he's the moon base commander. And his first move is 
to selfishly call his own wife before notifying any government types. Also, how does a moon base detect this Saturn weirdness before Earth? It's not that much further out that it's measurably closer to Saturn. I feel like this whole moon base is just a little too James Bondy and stupid. I know we're not on good terms with aliens, but that's racist. How'd you decipher so much of their language? How did you determine he deciphered anything from a one-second glance at this wingdings board? You must be the pilot China sent. That's your opening line. In addition to being lame and obvious, it's also kind of racist. I was wondering if you wanted to get a drink, maybe fall in love. Guys, I think the sin counter just died from that pickup line. We may need to manually count sins with an abacus after this shit. Take him out, Commander. This sphere of peace thing that just flew to our moon to warn us about the aliens decided to do so without trying to communicate with us first or sending images of Hitler. Just flew to our airspace and expected the best. Also, sudden alien wormhole ship thing sucks the dust off the moon, and everyone wants to shoot it except Goldblum. And in this instance, I gotta side with everyone but Goldblum. Shoot that out of the sky, now! I don't care that the movie will go on to show Goldblum was probably right. Use logic, damn it! They're coming back, and this time we won't be able to stop them. This isn't Bill Pullman playing the president from the last movie Gone Crazy. This is Bill Pullman the actor talking about Emmerich and his production team. I will avenge you, brother. Guessing your brother died during the first movie's invasion. But it's way more interesting to think that stuffed cheetah killed your brother. And that's why you killed and stuffed it. Because any other explanation for that stuffed cheetah makes you a 100% asshole I cannot root for, FYI. Where the heck do you think you're going? Listen, Discount John Oliver. He's clearly going to space with that spaceship right there. And your question is unnecessary. Or at least misguided. Why didn't George Floyd? Everybody else is. Awesome. This character's so fun, what with the constant worrying, yelling, and exasperation. Glad David decided to let him go on this trip. Independence Day 2 would like to remind you how much David hates flying, and how much 2016 Jeff Goldblum hates acting. I'm actually glad no one is buying this guy's book. Puts him in his place. You're the father of the guy, not the guy. You should have written a book about being the guy's father. But no, you wrote this, and now you suffer. A former president with full Secret Service detail has escaped using the fake body in the bed method, because of course he has. There it is. That's the crash site. Thanks, David. All these people, but where's the humanity in this shot? There's more realism in the adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl 3D. How did President Whitmore get past several levels of security to even get this close to the current president? Every alien invasion movie these days makes it look like the moon is always in some fixed position that aliens can visit just before they reach Earth. Ships more than 3,000 miles in diameter. That seems excessive. Negative impact. Negative impact. I like a space computer that repeats everything it says. It's helpful in case anyone missed that first broadcast. It's like the yeah yeah of science fiction, entertaining and useful. Movie replaces original film's landmark destruction scenes with moon-based destruction scenes, and I'm sorry, just doesn't have the impact. If I'm honest, I don't really give a shit about the moon. Guy with headphones can't hear or feel destruction going on around him, cliche. It's an Emmerich staple. This guy is really just shocked at how familiar all this is. Man of Steel. How can this ship with two main characters on it be so close to the massive destruction without being affected by it? Wait, never mind. I think I answered my own question. What goes up must come down. While I admit Jeff Goldblum is good at saying cheesy action lines like this, what the f is he talking about? There's an alien ship landing on Earth that never went up, but merely came down on Earth. So what the f screenwriter? Lazy much? Months before the Brexit vote, London gets f good and hard. Something tells me this is only slightly more impossible than John Cusack's miraculous drive in 2012. This scene could also be accidentally cut into 2012, and I wouldn't know the difference. I like to get the landmarks. Even when the movie is being self-aware, it somehow ends up being wrong. This is clearly incidental damage from all the other f***ery going on, but let's laugh it up about how the aliens are landmark racist. Put your pants? Uh, yeah. Yeah, me too. All five screenwriters on this film collectively high-fived over the peed pants joke, because it was righteous in its originality and hilariousness. You better come and see this. You better come and see this, f***er. Here's Judd Hirsch's failed author character, cooking a steak on a boat named after a Madonna song on the Atlantic just in time to be in the center of the action. Because we all loved him so much in the first movie, this will surely make us forget Will Smith rejected this turd. Rain, you take the lead. I gotta see about someone. Because that's how the military works. Mom! Dylan flies back to the hospital just in time to witness how much of a failure he is at saving his mom. And she's dead. So the question is, did Vivica Fox ask for too much money? Did the screenwriters only just get out of Character Motivations 101? Does Roland Emmerich hate strippers turn doctors? Yeah, Judd Hirsch is basically Jesus in this boat. I'm no longer remotely worried about his chances of survival. He's untouchable. Luckily for Brackish, he decided to escape his room at just the moment when President Whitmore arrived to open up the alien prison. He overrode the system. <laughs> the depressed, deranged former president overrode your modern day security system? F this movie is aggressively stupid. He has arrived. Well now, apparently the pronoun game spans across the universe. I feel like this is some sort of metaphor where analog kills digital, but this is Independence Day too, so probably not. Just shut up, okay? That's enough. 
I feel like this movie almost certainly already showed me these underage driving melodramatic teens, and yet this still feels like the first time I'm seeing them, and I hate them. I think they're after our molten car. Yeah, but maybe they're trying to save humanity and get the Earth spinning again, like in the classic 2003 film The Core. Also, I guess there are no other good heat sources in the nearby solar systems, like suns and shit. Totally after the molten core. You nailed it, dude. Interesting that he's looking at a family photo in which the kid in the picture is not him. And did Will Smith get a $10 million photograph appearance fee for this movie? I, just, I couldn't save her. It was too late. I wasn't cheeky enough. This red mass on the top of the ship, that's your target. It's exactly the same, but is not in any way like the Death Star's weakness. We're going to send a fleet of drones to go in ahead of you and disable their shields. What makes you think you have the technology to disable their shields? It's the 4th of July. Wait, those f***ing aliens waited 20 years and then attacked Earth on the same f***ing calendar day as before? stupid ass aliens, Jesus. She's happy because she f***ed one of those pilots before they all took off and now that thing is no longer after her. Phew. Somehow this plasma drill will take forever to cut down to the Earth's core, even though it clearly has none of the earthly limitations I did when I tried to shovel my way down to it. Command, we have visual. Only just now? How does any ship avoid being hit by these things? Seriously, there's so much junk on this screen, it's like playing that old Genesis game Target Earth that was impossible unless you put in a cheat code and loaded the cartridge into a toaster. Dylan, that's me, 12 o'clock! Liam Hensworth and Will Smith's son collaborate to take out a single alien ship, and they're left alone by everyone to do that, despite there being like 10 times the alien ships in this airspace as Earth ships. Whatever. Cool movie moment. Logic be damned. Everyone here should be dead is what I'm saying. I think we need to fly inside. To be even more like Star Wars, sir. She knows that they're coming. Yeah, because she looked out her front window. Look, if you're going to give this guy a connection to the aliens, can you at least make him spew something not super obvious? It's a trap. A trap for what? Why would you leave these pilots in here only to disable their jets? Do they need alive humans for some reason? I don't think they do, which makes this it's a trap scene pretty pointless. Well, sh there goes HBO again. She baited us. Yeah, she attacked you and you counterattacked, but she was ready for it. She's a regular Bobby Fischer. Aliens are attacking this base and the doors are being forcefully opened, and yet no one has tried to take Madam President anywhere safe. She's basically closer to the doors than anyone in the room even. All members of the presidential line of succession are presumed dead. We're here to swear you in, sir. Well, isn't that convenient? Every member of the presidential line of succession? Luckily, this character is being played by William Fickner. Have a little faith. You want to talk about faith? Watching Joey King bitch out Judd Hirsch for using colloquialisms during an alien invasion is not anywhere near my list of things I want to see, because I am not Roland Emmerich. Thank God. Why, if the two right lanes are so backed up, people are outside their vehicles, is this left lane so wide open? I live in America, damn it, and I know for a fact this third lane would be backed up too, and there'd be ten makeshift lanes on the fields on either side that would also be backed up. This planet has been unified in a way that's unprecedented in human history. Movie thinks it's going to give Bill Pullman another rousing speech moment, but realizes Bill Pullman will only ever be allowed to have one of those in his lifetime. Dude is giving a motivational speech to one guy, but others take notice and begin closing in to hear the rest of it cliché. Their enemy is our ally. Look, if you're going to bring Alien vs. Predator into this, we've lowered the bar to the point where we're not even high jumping anymore. We're curling. Here's where the movie had a great opportunity to be an awesome alien sci-fi film, having American pilots fighting in the alien ecosystem that is located entirely on this huge ship. But instead, the movie totally glosses over this as something they need to get away from, rather than bathe in. How long can Earthlings hold their breath underwater on an alien space? God damn it, I am not even going to finish that sentence. The movie can dare lick my balls. Also, Independence Day, Goblet of Fire. This dumbass touches an alien sphere without anyone seeing it before it's too late. And it just so happens to be the thing that opens this f***ing sphere. I mean, damn it. My species shed our biological existence for a virtual one thousands of years ago. So your species is a bunch of Lucys then? I came to evacuate as many of you as possible. But instead of simply speaking English to you right away and giving you this awesome warning, I needed to show up to your moon base like an idiot and get myself shot up first. Extracted its molten core. They use them to refuel their ships and grow their technology. Don't ask how they do that with a core that is mostly iron-nickel alloy. It's terrifying and super cool. My system holds the key to superior technology. That's why you lost, right? I mean, they beat you. You said you're the sole survivor. Why would I believe your tech is superior? And there is a hidden planet where I teach refugees from other fallen worlds how to build weapons that will defeat them. So there's a hidden planet that somehow magically appears to refugees as they flee their planet? And once they land on said planet, they're told to go find the sphere she knows what to do next? I mean, there are so many questions that won't be answered by this movie because it thinks it's getting another sequel. But now that I am activated, the queen will detect my signature and hunt me down. Maybe you should have sent an instruction manual first before coming here? If we hide the real sphere inside the isolation chamber... If this sphere's frequency can be read from space, how much can an isolation chamber really do? Filled with cold fusion bombs and lure her out to the soft flats. <laughs> 
you in the ear movie. You set off cold fusion bombs. You're going to kill everyone from here to Houston. Not if we use the shield generators from this base to contain the blast. Well, I checked out an hour ago, but this sounds suspiciously like bullshit to me. We were wrong. We do not have seven hours until the Earth core breach. We only have one. What a shocker! The professional estimators in a Roland Emmerich movie were way off on their predictions, and the danger is a lot more imminent. I'll fly it in. No, you won't. President Whitmore got ready for this just in time to crush his daughter's dreams of being a hero. Julius finds a magic bus that the driver abandoned right when the station wagon was about to run out of gas. Excuse me! Down here! There you go. This movie saw Guardians of the Galaxy, loved Star-Lord, but failed to learn anything about story or originality in the process, so we end up with this bullshit. While Jake does this, can I ask again what the point of this trap was? They basically allowed the ships in and everyone realized, oh no, it's a trap! And that sounded like something really, really bad, but to what end? They could have simply not trapped these guys and shot them down outside easily. The aliens didn't need anything from them, so this trap is totally worthless. The technology hasn't changed at all! No interface! Sounds like that's a change in technology then, doesn't it? Also, amazing after the first movie that the aliens didn't advocate locking technology for their ships, or require a password, or alien DNA, or anything that would prevent humans from using them. Hey man, I just want you to know, we don't make it out of here. This is a cliche, but I don't have the strength to write out the whole thing. I'm just hoping you feel me on this one. This is f I understand that many people around the world are tuning into this channel on their shortwave radios. Okay, first of all, how would you know that? Is the World Shortwave Radio message board still operating during this super obvious alien invasion? Second of all, why would you say this, even if it's true? Are you trying to tell the aliens how to find your listeners? For those of you listening, no matter your nationality, color, or creed. Or language. I mean, I'm kind of assuming you won't speak English here. Otherwise, good f***ing luck. It's your dad. He collapsed. Come with me quick. This dad is a f***er. And if you didn't realize Bill Pullman was going to die in this movie, probably while sacrificing himself to save the planet, then you don't watch movies very often. It's good to see you flying again. Okay, first of all, saying this instead of I'm sorry I lied to you five minutes ago. Your place is in the air. Like you would know, terrible father. Yep, the movie felt the need to recreate the sacrificial plane flying into the alien ship scene from the first movie. Because Roland Emmerich only has, like, two ideas max, and those two ideas keep f***ing and producing inbred child ideas that are somehow even worse. Wait, if she's dead, why are her fighters still attacking us? This gal would be excellent at cinema sins, but terrible at cliché screenwriting. There has to be a second whammy, duh. Yep, all powerful alien queens hold grudges just like you and me. Somebody's asshole dog is in danger cliché. It feels like this alien should have easily caught up to the bus and destroyed it by now. Or these ships trying to blow up the alien should have destroyed the bus by now. We are within six minutes, sir. Actually nine, but you couldn't possibly know the movie would distort time to suit its needs. But good ticking clock narration, dude. Fucking come on, movie! How much bullshit do you expect me to swallow? Like, all of it? I do have a gag reflex, you know. Is there ever gonna be a realization from these pilots that their shooting isn't working? Ah, what, did the shield lose its maximum amount of hit points? Thank God, this video game has been boring and confusing. By the way, why is the alien queen so intent to destroy the school bus and Patricia? Isn't the mission for her to find the sphere? Why does she care so much about these assholes? This alien queen is so motivated by flashes of anger, it's a wonder she ever got this far in her Earth takeover attempt. How much you want to bet Liam Hemsworth saves her ass? Like, all the dollars? I got you, baby! Well, f he just ruined my bet. She must have taken control of our systems. This is where movies officially make you f***ing angry. These assholes flew out of the mothership 15 minutes ago, but did the alien queen want to take control then? Nope. Just allow them to fly out, no problem. What about when these ships were firing at her a minute ago? Nope. Just allow them the time to save not Mae Whitman, then control them. These guys have no manual controls in the alien ships they stole. Then they turn on the fusion thrusters, manually mind you, and amaze balls. I got the controls back! They have controls back. Get ready for a close encounter, bitch! Did this movie just steal from Independence Day and Aliens while taking Close Encounters of the Third Kind's name in vain? Nice gag, but his hands are both on the wheel, and these wipers just turned on. So that's some magic bullshit. Or else he's got a child under the dashboard where we can't see that's just turned on the wipers, which raises even more questions. And none of these crashing alien ships landed on anything or anyone important. The end. I need to marry you, Are you trying to shoot me? This joke is unfunny. What's worse is that it's actually kind of offensive, casually suggesting violence is commonplace in marriages. But mostly it's unfunny. Yes, let's let all the little school children get super up close to the we think she's dead but we don't know for sure alien queen and her dripping bodily fluids. Jesus. Ten years after this, Aaron Brockovich takes David and his dad for all they're worth in a vicious yet just class action lawsuit on behalf of these kids who all develop Neptune pneumonia. Maybe you guys should stay with me for a, a, a while. I think that we'd really like that. What the f***ing f movie? This is some kind of prequel to Lovely Bones or something? I mean... Old man walks up to four young kids and just adopts them on the spot, with no checks and balances. Why is the ship flying away? They killed the queen, sure, but what now possesses it to go back into space? Was that something the sphere told us? I'm not sure I give a It wants us to lead their resistance! Well, you should have made a better movie then, because that's not happening unless Fox wants to hemorrhage more money. 
We're still getting one anyway, aren't we? <clears throat> oh, frontal! I feel like you're driving me to court martial. This is crazy. throw up on you. Be as in bourbon, be as in Belize. Beautiful place. Just stay calm and don't panic. This is no time to panic. This is the perfect time to panic. Debris, Dusty, we have debris! Debris! Charlie, look at those fields down there. There are fields now. Endless fields. Filled with cold fusion bombs. And lure her out to the soft flat. You don't put any stock in this cold fusion mumbo jumbo, do you?